Hello again, boys and girls. It's Mr. Wassman, and today we are uh, hitting a milestone of multiplication, multiplying two-digit numbers by two-digit numbers. Uh, we are taking large digit multiplication to the next level. So we are in our math journals on pages 130 and 131, and uh, let's start by taking a look at the first problem uh, that they offer us. It says draw a partition rectangle to represent the multiplication problem, then use partial products multiplication to record your work in a simpler way. Now, let's take a look at this problem 20 times 34. Now, technically, 20 is a two digit number. However, as we've been doing here, 20 is just two with a zero behind it, representing two tens. So we don't have two digits to uh, consider. It's just a number that holds a two-digit place value. So when I create a partition rectangle, it might look like this. I'm still going to take 34 and break it down into three tens, 30, and four ones. I'm still going to multiply it by 20. So when I'm multiplying, i got to count my zeros. 3 times 2 is 6. So 3 tens, or 3 with 1 zero, uh, multiplied by 2 with 1 zero is going to give me 6 with 1, 2 zeros. 600. And then 20 times 4 is going to give me 80, or 2 tens times 4 is going to give me 8 tens. And then when I go and add those two products together, 600 plus 80 is going to give you 680. Pretty straightforward, right? Now let's try that problem again in the partial products method. Same setup. 20 times 34. Okay. So I'm going to multiply 20 times 30. I'm going to multiply 20 times 4. And that gives me the same partial products. And then I add them together get my total of 680. So far so good, right? Now, let's take a look at another problem that is a two-digit number times a two-digit number that has whole number digits in each place value. 17 times 34 requires us to take a little bit of different approach, okay? So when I create my partition rectangle for this problem, it's going to take a little different form. I'm going to build a rectangle with two layers. It looks like a window. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to set up the top, just like I did in the previous problem, 34 is the three tens and four ones, and then I'm going to take 17 and break that down into one ten and seven ones. Ten plus seven is 17. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to multiply each pair of numbers and put it in the corresponding box. 30 times 10 is going to give me 300, or three with one zero, times one with one zero is going to give me three with one two zeros. Ten times four is going to give me forty. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to repeat the process with thirty times seven. Three times seven is twenty-one, so three tens times seven is going to give me twenty-one tens. And then seven times four is twenty-eight. So as you can see, I now have four products to contend with. 
And what do I do? I have to add all those products together. So when I line up my place values, the calculations become pretty easy to see. And my total becomes 578. Now that tracks because 17 is a number that's smaller than 20. Uh, and 20 times 34 gives me an answer 680. So my answer of 17 times 34 should be slightly smaller or basically three less groups of 34. Now, if I approach that problem in the partial products uh, way, I've got to do one more thing than I did in my partial products model for 20 times 34. Okay, so let's set up that algorithm. 17 times 34. And as I begin to calculate, I have to ask myself, well, what is 17? 17 is 10 and 7. And I'm going to multiply the 10 by the 30 of 34. And I'm going to multiply the 7 times the 30. And then I'm going to multiply the 10 by the 4 in 34. I'm going to multiply the 7 by the 4 in 34. So if you look over here, you'll see that I have set up multiplication problems that represent each box within my partition rectangle. 30 times 10, 7 times 30, 10 times 4, and 7 times 4. And then I just go through and I do all the calculations, which I already know the answers to because I've already done the legwork in the previous problem. So 10 times 30 is 300, 7 times 30 is 210, 10 times 4 is 40, 7 times 4 is 28. I'm going to add all those together and I get the same total product as I did with the partitioning rectangle is 578. Now, I want you to take notice of my two addition problems. You'll notice that I added the partial products in a different order. Over here, I led with 300 and then I added the 40 followed by the 210 and then ended with 28. In this one, the second and third add-ins were switched in order from top to bottom. And that's okay, because it does not matter in which order you add things, uh, you're going to get the same sum, okay? 9 plus 3 gives me 12, as does 3 plus 9. The order in which I put those numbers in my uh, algorithm does not change the outcome. The same can be true for when I'm setting up my multiplication problem. I wrote it as 17 times 34, with the 17 on top. The order of the numbers does not change the outcome, as I will demonstrate. 34 times 17 is 30 times 10, and 30 times 7. It's also going to be 4 times 10, and 4 times 7. And again, I would go through and I would multiply each pair of factors. 30 times 10 is 300. 30 times 7 is going to give me 210. 4 times 10 is 40. 4 times 7 is 28. And again, the outcome is going to be the same. 
regardless of when I set up the multiplication problems, you'll notice that my add-ins are the same. 300, 210, 40, and 28. That will give me the same total sum of 578. And just like the order in which two numbers added together does not change the outcome, the order in which you multiply two numbers does not change the outcome either. Use those same two digits in my previous model. 9 times 3 gives me 27, as does 3 times 9. The order in which I multiply two numbers together does not affect the outcome. Okay. So as long as you remember that 17 is 110 and 7 ones, and you remember that 34 is 3 tens and 4 ones, if you multiply all four of those digits in any order, you should get the correct answer. So when you try the problems on page 131, you're going to have to break down each of the problems into four separate multiplication problems. In the example, 38 times 76, as you can see, there are four partial products. 2,100 is the product of 30 times 70. That's the 3 there and the 7 there. Now, I could easily forget that 38 is made up of three tens, and I just look at the three and I think, oh, three times seven is 21. But I gotta remember, three tens is a three with one zero behind it, and seven tens is a seven with one zero behind it. Three times one with one zero times seven with one zero gives me 21 with one, two zeros. 560 is the product of eight times 70. 180 is the product of 30 times 6. And 48 is the product of 8 times 6. So again, 38 or 3 tens and eight ones times 76, which is seven tens and six ones. Keep all those place values in mind when you're multiplying, and you will be able to come up with any answer to any multiplication problem. This is a big step, boys and girls. Uh, this is the big leagues. This is truly fourth grade math right here. This is the kind of stuff that uh, really defines what we've been uh, building up to from the beginnings of third grade when you were first introduced to the concepts of multiplication uh, to this point today. So of course it's going to be natural that you have questions or you have setbacks or calculation errors. Okay, One of the things that they do is in problem number six they ask you to figure out what is the calculation error in this problem. Okay, and your math teacher will happily walk you through why Eli in problem number six uh, made a calculation error. Okay? Please talk to your math teachers if you are confused or unsure or just want a, a helping hand when you are trying this out. Uh, the role of a teacher is to enable students to do things on their own, but before you can run, you have to learn how to walk. So. These, uh, these problems will take you a little time, but as soon as you get some practice under your belt, it'll seem like second nature. Good luck, and until we speak again, have a good day. Thanks.